In this video, we're going to take a look at modeling with straight lines. Before we take a look at any exam style questions here for modeling with straight lines, we just need to recall a few key definitions here for straight lines. So to begin with here, let's just take two general points. Let's say we've got x1, y1. We also have x2, y2. Okay, these are my two general points here. So to begin with, we can find the gradient. So for the gradient here, this is given as m. That's how we denote the gradient. And this is given as y2 minus y1 all over x2 minus x1. Okay, we can use this formula here to find the gradient if we know two points on that straight line. We can also find the equation of the line here. So for the equation, So for the equation of the straight line, let's say it goes through the point x1, y1 here, okay? The equation of the straight line through x1, y1 is given as y minus y1 is equal to m, where m here is the gradient, multiplied by x minus x1, okay? That's how we find the equation of the straight line that goes through the point x1, y1. And we can also find the distance here. Okay, so for the distance, so for the distance between these two points x1, y1 and x2, y2, and this is given as d is equal to the square root of x2 minus x1 all squared, so x2 minus x1 all squared plus and we do the same with the y coordinates here, y2 minus y1 all squared. Okay, and this would give us the distance here between these two points. That's pretty much everything we need here. The only thing left to say then is we can then use a linear model to show the relationship between two variables, say x and y. And we'd write this then as y is equal to ax plus b. Okay, and that's the key idea behind this video. Okay, so we've got everything we need here to kind of tackle now modeling with straight lines. So now let's take a look at some exam style questions for modeling with straight lines. So if we start off with question one here, we're told in 2011, there were 27,500 people living in a small town. So it's projected that the population of the small town will increase by 500 people each year. Now for part A, we're asked to write down a linear model linking the population P of the small town T years after 2011. So we need two things here in particular. We need the gradient. So that's how much it will increase by each year. How much the population will increase by each year. And we also need the initial population. Okay, the initial population there. Now, I think on the face of it, both of these are quite obvious. So for the gradient here, well, it increases by 500 people each year. So the gradient in this case will be 500. And the initial population, well, we're given that at the beginning of the question. Okay. 27,500 people live in the small town. What we need to do now is put all of that together to get our linear model. So for the initial population then, that's for when t is equal to zero. Okay, so when t is equal to zero. So in other words, we get 27,500 there. 27,500. And then for the gradient, like we said, that would be this 500 here. Okay. If we just think about our linear model here for a moment. Well, we're looking at the population p. So we do a underneath here. A. Well, like we said, it's going to be for the population P. So P is going to be equal here. Well, we're looking at how it increases each year. So the gradient will go with the variable T here. I'm going to write that as AT and then plus B there to represent the initial population. So if I just explain that again, P here represents our population. T is the number of years 
um, after 2011. And A here is the gradient, and B is the initial population. Well, we know the initial population, that's 27,500. We know the gradient, which I've uh, denoted as A here, that's 500. So if we put all of that together then, B is going to be equal to 500T. So 500T plus B here, and this is my 27,500. So that's equal, do it on the other side there. So B is equal 27,500. So I put that into my linear model here. There we have it. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get rid of that. A comma there just so it doesn't confuse anyone. So let's try that again. 27,500 there. Okay. And there we have it. So that's our solution to part A. That's our linear model linking the population P to the small town T years after 2011. So for B here, if I do that up here, we have to find the population of the small town in 2026. So we need to check now how many years this will be after 2011. Well, in this case, if it's 2026, that would be 15 years after 2011. But in that case, then we're looking when T is equal to 15. Like we said, it's 15 years after 2011. And T here is how many years after 2011 that is. So in that case, T is simply 15. All we need to do now is use our linear model from part A and just substitute T equals 15 into that linear model. So therefore, P is equal to 500 times 15. We just put that into a bracket just so it's a bit easier to see. Plus the initial population of 27,500. Put this into your calculator here. And what you're going to get then is 35,000. Okay. So in that case then, we're saying the population of the small town in 2026 would be 35,000 people. That's our solution to B. And then for C here, we're just asked to state a reason why this model may not be appropriate. So I think the most obvious kind of um, reason here would be to say that the population is unlikely to increase by the same fixed amount each year. So if I just um, give that here underneath, so population unlikely to increase by the same fixed amount each year. Okay, and there we have it. We just need to say something along those lines um, that would simply get us our one mark there. Okay, and there we have it. So that's our solution to question one. So if we take a look at the very last question here, we've got a painter who charges a fixed fee for each job as well as a day rate for each day that he works on the same job. So his first job of the month takes three days and he charges £750, and his second job of the month takes five days and he charges £1,000. 150. So for part A here, we're asked to write an equation linking the number of days D and the total cost of a job C in the form C is equal to AD plus F. So there's two things that we need here. We need A, which is the gradient, and we need F, which is the fixed fee for each job. Okay. So how do we find those? Well, we need to form some coordinates here. Okay. The only place that we can form the coordinates is from the first part of the question here. And clearly we need some numbers to form these coordinates. So we get the coordinates from this line here and this line here. So my first point, well, this three here would be my X coordinate. I'm going to get three here and the 750, the amount that he charges, that would be my Y coordinate. So I'm going to get three and 750. That's my first point there. So my second point here from this line, again, the number of days, that's my X coordinate. That'll be five for this one. And then for the Y coordinate here, again, that's the amount that he charges. So that's going to be one, one, five, zero. So now that we've got the points here, we can now find the gradient easily. So in this case, A, my gradient, so if we do it up here. So the gradient A is equal to Y2 minus Y1, that's one, one, Five zero minus seven fifty. 
And then we divide this here by x2 minus x1. So 5 minus 3. So my numerator here, 1150 minus 750. That would give me 400. My denominator here, 5 minus 3, that would give me 2. So we get 400 over 2, which would give us 200 there. Okay. So the gradient here is 200. So A is equal to 200. What I also need now is F here. Okay, once I've got both of these, we can easily form our linear model. So to find F here, we need to use either of these two points here. Okay, it doesn't matter which of the two we use. But what I can do now is update this linear model here, this equation, because we now know the value of A. So C is equal to 200D plus F. So using either of these two points here, we know the value of D. That's either 3 or 5. We also know the respective costs as well. So that'll either be 750 if we use d is equal to 3, or it'll be 1150 if d is equal to 5. Okay, so I just use this first point here. The cost is 750, and that's equal to 200 times d, which is 3. So 200 times 3 plus f. So 200 times 3 is 600. 750 is equal to 600 plus f. All we need to do now is solve for f here. So f is equal to 150 there. Okay. So in that case, now we've got everything we need now to form the equation or our linear model. So in this case, c is equal to ad, where a is 200. That's 200d. And then F here is 150. So we get 200D plus 150. And there we have it. So that's our solution to part A. Now for part B, we're asked to interpret the values of A and F. So again, we say look at our linear model here. Now we've already established what F is. So F here is the fixed fee for each job. That's this 150 here. So F is the fixed fee for each job. That's the fixed fee for each job. That looks a bit like um, a P here. Let's say for. That's the fixed fee for each job, which in this case would be £150. And the A here, that's our gradient. Because that goes with a D here, so 200D, that's the day rate, okay? So we take the number of days and we times it by how much he charges for each day. So A here is the day rate, which in this case is 200 pounds. Okay, so that's 200 pounds. And there we have it. So that's all we need to say for part B there. That's the value of A, interpreting the value of A, and interpreting the value of F there. So to finish with them, for part C, told that the painter charges 2,350 for his third job of the month, but we're asked to evaluate how many days it took the painter to complete his third job. So what we're told here is that the cost is 2,350. We're just looking to find now the value of D. Okay, so just substitute this value in here for C. We get 2350 is equal to 200D plus 150. All we need to do now is just solve for D here. So it should hopefully be nice and straightforward. Just solving a linear equation. So I'll subtract 150 off both sides. I get that 200D is equal to 2200. That's 2,200. So in that case, then to find D here, so D is equal to 2,200 divided by 200. That's the same as 1,100 divided by 100. In this case, would give me 11. Okay. So it's took the plumber 11 days to complete the third job. Okay. So that's 11 days there and there we have it so that's our solution to question two that brings the end of this video on modeling with straight lines 
in the next video. We're going to take a look at exam revision for straight lines.